Over the years, I've designed a lot of really cool LED lighting fixtures. But as the saying goes, it's always the cobbler that goes without shoes. So I've never really designed anything cool for myself. And I think now it's time to change that. So a couple of years back, I invested in an 80 watt uh, CO2 laser cutter. And that took me down this whole rabbit hole of becoming obsessed with designing really cool, complicated uh, things out of just 2D cut stock. Like this clock is all just made out of uh, MDF board, laser cut, and it actually works. It has a little electronic brain on it and then a coil that pulses it once a minute. It actually keeps time. And that led to making things like this, just sort of shape studies, looking at what kind of strong, cool, interesting things you could make just with 2D cut parts. So I think good ideas often come from sort of a cross fertilization of things that you've experienced in your life. Like they seem unrelated and all of a sudden it's like, well, yeah, let's let's make them relate. So as I'm looking at all my old LED boards and stuff, I also started to think about like, hey, aren't these the same shape? And then it dawned on me like, well, yeah, why don't I just make this? but with PC board as the spar material and, and the hubs as well. I could then make it a double-sided board with LEDs on both sides, like some really nice warm white LEDs, and make these little hubs both mechanical and electrical interconnection points. I think what I could easily do is just put little uh, tinned lands in the corners here that you could just hit with a soldering iron to create really solid mechanical and electrical connections. And the cool thing is that this whole thing could just then be a super simple kit where you just literally have you know a cracker board of all these little spars and hub things, just flat pieces that are super easy to ship. And when you get it, you just break out the pieces, assemble it, and hit it with a soldering iron and boom, you've got this like really beautiful, super strong um, icosahedron lamp concept. Pretty cool. As I was thinking about this and getting kind of excited, I thought to myself, well, this light needs to be really elegantly dimmable. Like all lights should be elegantly dimmable, right? But um, I'm not going to make it like a DMX controlled thing or give it like, you know, a remote or have some complicated wiring infrastructure. It just, it needs to be something totally resolved and self-contained so that like all you have to do is just hang it from a wire supplying 12 volts and it's done. It's a completely finished, beautiful solution that is really elegant. So what I thought is, if we make this bottom uh, coupler thing here, this PC board, the brain, this has the MCU on it, and we put one of those um, optical time of flight distance sensing modules on it, that we could use that as a really elegant gesture interface. So like this, the top one would be like the power input. So all of these little hubs um, would be the same except the bottom and the top. Top one is power, bottom one is the brain. So the concept would be when it's hanging there, you can come up to it and if you just swipe your hand through this zone underneath it, it'll know, okay, toggle on and swipe it again, toggle off. That's the basic on off concept. Then if you come up to it and hold your hand within this little sensing zone, if you bring your hand up, it would elegantly dim up brighter and brighter. And then as you move your hand down, you could sort of then drag it down dimmer. And when you pull your hand away, it would just hold that last value and that's, that's your light level. I think that would be really, really beautiful. A very elegant concept. So looking at this in CAD, 
This is my original model that I made that MDF piece out of. So I modified it a little bit. I um, changed the thickness to be the same as um, 1 16th printed circuit board material and, you know, moved a couple little holes around so far. So looking at the parts of this, this represents the little hub coupler things. It's a very simple part, just with these five slots. Obviously, this is all designed for laser cutting, so we'd need to redesign the end of this slot for a router cut instead of laser cut to match printed circuit board fabrication uh, technology. Let's look at this spar. So the spar, again, is just a very simple part with these two slots on the end. We can obviously rethink the shape of these, but the basic idea is, is very clear. Going back to the whole thing, we have to think about, like, what do we need from this electrically? Well, we need to have at least three conductors. That would be ground, 12 volts, and then a common PWM signal. If you imagine we connect all of the LEDs to plus 12, and then the lower end of that LED string would all be common and would be driven by a single end channel MOSFET, which is gonna go on this little board down here. And that common connection needs to be common to the whole thing. So we basically need to have three connections that electrically connect and unify this whole piece. Now, I started messing around with some ideas. I mean, obviously this is not really a printed circuit board design program, so I'm not really designing a board, but I can certainly model um, some basic traces and ideas, and that's exactly what I've done here. So looking at this now, we've got this green, which represents um, the ground, and the red is plus 12, and this blue represents the LED common. So at each one of these little connector points, they go to separate little lands or rings that allow them all to be connected. Now, if we just lay in a bead of solder, like a fillet, in each one of these little spots, we're accomplishing both a mechanical and electrical connection at the same time. What's really cool is, if you look at this, the amount of redundancy is enormous. So for example, if you did a bad job soldering, say, one of these, like this one in here, well, look at this. It's also going to be connected at the other end. So that holds true for the whole thing. So the redundancy in these connections is enormous. So you don't really have to worry about like a bad solder joint knocking this thing out. It's, it's really just going to work, like unless you totally messed it up. So I think that, that idea really works. So this bottom one would be the brain. This would have the MCU, the MOSFET, and the distance sensor. Now, obviously, we'd have to cut away a lot of this copper here to incorporate those parts. But I think you could get away with putting all that stuff on one side of this circuit board, just facing down. On the other side, you'd have um, this one, which would be the power entry one, that where the, um, the 12 volts would connect coming in. So those two probably would be different, but that that's two out of 12. The other 10 of these little connector things would all be identical. And these spars are also going to be identical. They're all just the same basic pattern on both sides. The LEDs would connect from the, the plus 12 over to the common PWM. It would just be the strings of them. And we just lay that out elegantly on both sides of this spar thing. And that's kind of really all there is to it. I think it's, it's pretty straightforward. I'm sure there's going to be some difficulties, but we'll cross those 
those bridges when we, uh, we come to them. So here's what I, I call my design calcs spreadsheet. I kind of do this for every project that I do is just kind of keep track of basic ideas and assumptions and also perform a lot of the kind of brain dead math that you need to do to like make sure you counted everything right. So I basically um, outline the, the parts, the hubs, the, the spars, and then I define like what the design voltage is, the LED circuit current I'm, I'm aiming for, and then do a simple sort of LED calculation where I say, all right, let's assume that there's white LEDs, so 3.2 volts uh, forward voltage approximately. We'll stack up three of those, which gives us a stack voltage of 9.6, which gives us 2.4 volts burden voltage, which we either dissipate in a resistor or some kind of current regulating scheme, depending. And we're going to put two stacks on each side of the spar. So that would be six LEDs on each spar and a total of 12 LEDs per spar. That's a total of 360 LEDs over the whole thing. And then doing a the math on the current, if one spar is 60 milliamps, it's about 1.8 amps or 21.6 watts total. Now, you know, I just kind of pulled this all out of my ass to get started. But this is kind of a good way to rough in the idea of something. And it's obviously super quick and easy to change it and it helps keep your thinking clear and easy. Okay, so thinking about this gesture interface concept, this time of flight ranging sensor, the VL53L0X part, looks extremely promising. It's really tiny. It's 4.4 by 2.4 by one millimeters says it can range up to two meters. Awesome. Uh, so this is a contender. Now, this thing obviously would be really difficult to breadboard and troubleshoot. So we, we would start by buying one of these. It's a, you know, sort of standalone module that allows you to get going with this thing without driving yourself nuts. But now before we fall in love with this thing, one of the things that I, I would do is buy two of these units and mount them about a meter apart and facing in the same direction and make sure that they did not interfere with each other. Because that's one of the things I've seen happen so many times with these ambitious sort of sensor concepts that you get these things and when you have one of them, it works perfectly. And then as soon as you have two in the same room, it all just goes to hell. So I want to try that. And I think that's an, a really necessary test to perform before I actually commit to using this part. So my goal with this thing is basically to produce these circuit boards that are flat. So you can just, you know, ship it in a box. When you get it, you just snap out all these little parts. Maybe the brain comes pre-programmed, so you don't have to think about that. You just take all these parts, fit them together into this um, icosahedron form, and then with a really brain-dead soldering iron operation, you basically solder it together so it's mechanically strong and electrically connected. Um, that's what I want to accomplish here. So now it's your turn. Jump on the forum, hub.fernikes.com, and give me your input, your design feedback. What would you like to see uh, done differently or better? Have at it.